Hey and welcome back to my channel. I am Jackie and I'm so glad you're here. Today I am going to share with you guys a flip through and kind of like an overview of what the Good and the Beautiful Nature Notebook is like. It's been a while since I have done just like a simple flip through of something. I am gathering the things that we're going to be using in our next coming school year and so I wanted to show you guys this is one of the things that I picked out. We'll try to do once a week or so, maybe a little more if the boys really like it, but I've had my eye on it for a long time, and so I thought I'd share it with you guys. So if you're new to my channel, like I said, my name is Jackie, but I am a mom of three boys. I have one on the way. He's due very, very soon, so that makes it four. I'm a mom of four boys. I have a seven-year-old who's going into second grade. I have a five-year-old who's going into kindergarten, and um, a two-year-old, and then this guy. So I've slowly been getting things together for our school year next year, but honestly, my headspace isn't really there right now. My headspace is like the birth and postpartum and new baby. So I've never added in an actual nature study to our homeschool. I've kind of tried to wing it a few times and we do do lots of outside time, but I like the idea of having just a simple notebook to kind of like bring along with us when we're out and about like on hikes and stuff and maybe dig into them, do some drawing, do, do some artwork. I like that a lot. Um, just flipping through the book, it looks totally appropriate for really kind of any age. Like you could go as deep into it as you want or just like kindergarten level, you know, pictures and not any formal writing, maybe you writing for your child on the writing parts. Um, so yeah, I think that it's going to be a really good fit for us as I have a kindergartner and second grader. I'm excited to hop into it with them and we may even start a little bit this summer because yeah, why not? So I had looked at these, these notebooks for like the last year and like I just didn't do it. didn't want to buy the PDF or, or order it or whatever. Finally, I bit the bullet. It was a whole $10 for the PDF. But I decided to go ahead and get the PDF after we got our Epson EcoTank um, printer. So once we got that, I felt a little more free to buy PDFs because I had an easy way to print them without it costing like a ton of money. So I like the idea of buying a PDF because then I can keep it and reuse it for the next kid or reprint it off if I need to. You have the advantage of the PDF being a little bit cheaper, but you're also spending money on, um, you know, paper and getting it bound, ink and that kind of thing. But I like having it on hand. So I decided to get this PDF. I think it was $10, like I said, and I was able to print it off. I was able to print it off times two um, from my printer, which is a absolute rock star. If you're looking for a good printer that prints off PDFs, the Epson EcoTank is really awesome. There's a bunch of different versions of it, but um, I will drop the link below to the one that we ended up getting from Best Buy, and it is a boss. Like, that printer is awesome. So if you're looking for a easy way to print off PDFs that you have, not have to wait weeks and weeks or um, spend a whole lot of extra money getting it done from a printing company, it may be the way to go for you. Anyway, I'll drop the link below to that one. So I printed these guys out. These are actually really straightforward. Um, they don't have any color inside of them. In some ways it's good because you're not using a ton of ink. So if you have a black and white printer and you just wanna print it off yourself, like this is the thing to print off because there's no color other than the front and the back of it. Um, but yeah, so the Nature Notebook, I, after I printed them off here at home, I went ahead and went to Office Depot. So I went ahead and got them bound. It was like $5 Office Depot to get them bound. And I got a plastic cover for the front. I don't know how much extra that was. Like it was, my total was like $10 to get both of these bound. So, you know, I'm looking at $20 for the PDF and to get both of these printed and bound. But I still have the PDF, which means I can use it with my other boys. We can print this off for different years to come because I feel like they can probably grow with this nature notebook. Anyway, I'm a fan of PDFs now, so yeah. So before I hop into Flip Blue, I just wanted to say we made a big switch to The Good and the Beautiful this past spring and with my first grader, then first grader, and we're really liking it. So I thought it fitting to add in The Good and the Beautiful nature notebook this year. I'm going to hop into this flip through and you guys can take a look at what this book is like and if it's something that you would like to purchase yourself. Um, it's 
so inexpensive for what it is and one thing that I like about the good and the beautiful is that it seems to be really affordable um, curriculums and they are just really high quality really great curriculums so like I said I have four boys now and this channel is all about intentional motherhood and homeschool days if that's something that you are into definitely subscribe below and give me a thumbs up drop a comment below and let me know that you are here I would love to say hey and tell me if you have ever used the good and the beautiful nature notebook so it is broken up by seasons and um, so there's lots and lots of space to draw. There's lots of space for artwork, which I really like. I think that's really cool in this because I think, you know, you can have different age kids do this at the same time at their level. And then it gives you plenty of space to go ahead and write, um, let the kiddos write or you write for the kiddos. Um, there are different types of studies in it that you'll see as I flip through it. So right here is a free study. So, you know, you're going outside and you, the kids see something that they're interested in this is where that could go right here and then you can hey you have space to draw and illustrate your picture so i like this like including all of your senses in nature which is something that is really cool to do um and just focusing on being outside and giving you an opportunity to use your senses so here it says to tape or glue your favorite fall leaves below there's a fall bingo so you can draw and find things as you see them. Time for a fall nature walk, hunt. So you're looking for a bunch of different stuff and then you can draw a picture about it. So I love the emphasis on artwork, which is really cool. So on to winter. So they kind of start out the same way as asking you what you like about winter. You can draw and then you can describe some things that you love during winter. I like this. So this is the first study that the book offers. It offers a rock study, which is really cool. Um, my kids love rocks, so this will be a perfect thing for them to do. Okay, guys, go find some rocks that you like, and we're going to look them up, and we're going to study about them. So it's kind of a fun thing to do. So um, that was the first study and focus. So different types of clouds, and then it has a whole section about winter poetry. There was not a section on fall poetry, but there was a nice big section for winter poetry. So that's kind of fun. So then you have your springtime right here. And then it starts out the same way. It starts out with, what do you like about spring? Check all that apply and describe it. There's another space for free study. A seed collection, which is pretty fun heading into spring. So that will be kind of a fun thing to do. Um, and it says to tape or glue seeds that you find in nature in the boxes below. Okay, here's another main focus. So we have a flower study here. Flower facts. It seems like it's getting more in depth with each season uh, on what to study and maybe a little more facts about things. That's just what it seems like to me. So then it shows all the flower parts that you have here. This is some pressed a space to put some pressed flowers, which I think is really cool. You draw flowers. So this study is a lot more in depth than the other ones that they've already done. And then it moves on to a tree study. So, I mean, I guess you could skip around and do, you know, maybe a flower study in the fall and then a tree study in the spring or vice versa, you know, and just kind of skip around. And then it has ends out the tree study with tree poetry, which is cute. So I love how poetry is added into all of the good and the beautiful, at least that I have seen, curriculums. So now we have summer and it starts out the same way. It starts out with, um, what do you like about summer and describe it. So summertime, you know, I don't know. You, we may start the summer one just because it is summer right now, but I'm not sure yet. It's not super in depth. Um, it's just like a nice pace. So we could do like a page at a time for a little summer nature study. And then it moves on to another study, the bird study. So it has bird facts, talks more about birds, illustrate some birds there, birds in your area, and lots of space for birds. So this bird study is probably the largest study that I've seen so far. Then it moves on to a leaf study which I kind of think would be kind of fun in the fall, a leaf study. So lots of, lots and lots of questions and focus on leaf. So like I said, as this 
this nature journal goes on through the seasons, it seems like, at least if you're starting in the fall, it seems like there's more studies, more focused studies on things. Lots and lots of leaf stuff, leaf poetry. And then there's an anytime section at the very end. So anytime you want to do this, there's ant study. Ants are always around, it seems like, at least in our yard. Um, and then just some other little activities towards the end. So I like the focus and emphasis on and creating and listening to poetry in nature. It's just really cool. So right here, here's an activity to do brainstorming nature poetry. And then a bark study. And then a space to leave your bark rubbings. That's it. So that is the flip through for you guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, just kind of like gave you a little overview of what it is. Like I said, it is very inexpensive. If it's something that you would like to add in or add on to a nature study you're already doing, it is like really flexible. I feel like you could fit it in with a lot of different um, nature study type things. So I'm excited to hop into it with the guys. Uh, drop a comment below and let me know what you think about it. I would love to hear. And um, go snag that PDF or go grab a couple. I believe the actual notebooks are $10.99 if you get them from The Good and the Beautiful and then of course they're shipping. But you know, that's also a great option too. Definitely drop a comment below. Let me know if you have experience with The Good and the Beautiful. I'm excited to dive into this little notebook that I almost bought like a year ago. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I will definitely link this PDF down below and I will also link my other The Good and the Beautiful videos below too. Thanks, well, thanks for watching and I hope you come back next time.